Hey, hey, Gator Nation. Welcome back to the Respect Our Decision podcast, episode 38. It is April 26, and as always, I'm your boy Hirsch, and with me is the hype man, Wes. What's good, Gator Nation? And CJ, the man, McCann. What's going on, guys? Hey, hey, guys, it's draft week. So, per usual, man, we're going to talk a little draft this week, talk about where we think the Gators in the draft might go. Got a few little recruiting news and notes. Not a whole lot going on right now. Coaches on the road, visiting prospects. Before we get to all that, guys, as always, I want to make sure we remind you, go out there, download this podcast, wherever you get your podcast from. We're available on all major podcast providers. And as always, guys, we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers for the YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, man, this is your last opportunity for the month of April to enter for our giveaway. It's your last chance. Last chance to win this hat that CJ's got there. CJ, what do they got to do? All they got to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment, and they're going to be entered. But this is your last week to do it. You know, put it next week because we're going to be announcing who won this hat next week. And so announcing. You, so you get... <laughs> <laughs> so if you get... So if you get, if, if you get on there next week, you're like, I'm here for the hat. We're going to tell you, you're too late. Yes, sir. Last but chance to get on board, man. Jump on. Have a chance to win this hat. But, hey, guess what? If you are late on the hat or you don't win the giveaway, our friends at Alma Mater can always hook you up with the hat. You can buy it from them. Use our link. Kick it back to us. And then you get the hat. And, you know, hey, we're none the wiser. You can, say, right. you, you can say you want it. You can say All you right. want the hat. We want we not right. you nobody. <laughs> I'm just messing with CJ. Hey, if y'all don't want the hat, you're like, man, but Hirsch, where do you get that shirt from, man? Hey. You can go to the alma mater, find this nice and lightweight hoodie there, man. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Check it out. If you're listening to this podcast, wherever you get your podcast from, check out our Twitter page. I'll put the picture and the link there, man. This hoodie is awesome, man. Lightweight. It's 70 degrees outside, man. I'm wearing it. Ain't even, you know, can't even tell, man. It, it's awesome. I go jogging in it. Everything. Fantastic fit. Check out our friends at Alma Mater, man. Give some good gators your business, as always, baby. And as always, guys, always remember, we are partnered with Prize Picks. And now is a good time, man, to jump on with Prize Picks. NBA playoffs are, are fired up, man. You got Jimmy Butler out there looking like Prime Jordan out there. I know all you Miami fans are, are loving life right this Playoff second. Jimmy. <laughs> We got Ice Trey hitting threes from the logos out there, man. Y'all could have dropped the bet on that with Trey hit. You know, Trey going to hit a game winner. Now is the time, man. If you haven't joined and signed up for Prize Picks, go to prizepicks.com. Use our code RESPECT100. Get your first deposit matched up to $100. Make that money, baby. That's what it's get all about. Get that Mother's about. Day money because Mother's Day is coming up. Get that Mother's Day. Yeah, man. Right. Win a bet, man. You, you, y'all might be tight on funds, man. Go drop some, go drop a five-play parlay and and get that woman something nice for Mother's Day. She That's deserves right. it. Or maybe she doesn't. Yeah. That's up for you to decide. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas. Recruiting news. Not, not a whole lot of recruiting news this week, man. Our staff is out there on the recruiting trail. Coaches are all over the country right now. I know Mike P is going out to Texas to see Colin Simmons and try to talk him down from that LSU visit he took. Wes is sad. He he don't know what to do with himself, man. This he's seen another five-star edge prospect possibly just riding off into the sunset with another SEC West team. He's he's sick to his stomach. But these coaches are out there doing work, man. They're out there visiting all the prospects. They're out there in Texas doing a little work, seeing a bunch of offensive linemen, thank God, because um, I don't know, man. The, the SNS offensive line coaches got some work to do. Mm. They got to prove some stuff to us. But, guys, we are going to talk real quick about um, a lot of official visits have been scheduled for the next uh, – for, for June, excuse me, not for the next month, which is, of course, uh, May. But the coaching staff is starting to lock in official visits with some prospects, man. And it looks like June is going to be a really busy month. And it's going to start right off the rip, too, man. June 2nd, tons of big visitors. Names like, hey, you know him. DJ Lagway is going to be in town. 
Big time linebacker Christopher Jones out of Virginia. The staff was just Jay Bateman was just up to see him either yesterday or today. I, I forget exactly what day it was, but I mean, hey, linebackers, baby. Um, Texas AM commit Dalen Evans. As you've listened in, we've been hot on the trail of Dalen Evans, and we might be primed to flip that young man. And he's gonna come on out with um D, you know, be in town with another Texas boy, DJ as we hope maybe to get that flip going. Uh, Miles Graham will be on campus. On uh, Actually, I'm sorry. Miles will be the, here the week after. Um, but Adarius Hayes will be here on the second. Uh, just Josiah Davis will be in town for an official visit that weekend. And, and just multiple other prospects, man. Uh, setting up to be a big weekend. We saw the staff do this last year, try to get those big visit weekends all clumped together, get prospects together. Much as we've seen with the spring game and Friday Night Lights, Billy really likes to get these big momentum grabs, and it looks like they're trying to do that again. But the very following weekend is going to be, you know, just more great prospects set up. Miles Graham, Jaree Hawkins, the big, uh, the wide receiver from IMG. Don't want to call him big. He's like 5'9", but yay. <laughs> Michael Uini, uh, we talked about offensive lineman out of Texas. Big time offensive tackle. Michael Luini. Um, Aaron Childs, inside linebacker right there. Uh, and recently decommitted cornerback Juwan Johnson from Colorado. You might not have seen this this week that he decommitted. Uh, Louisiana kid, cornerback. Gators were real high on the kid before he committed to Colorado. He decommitted this week along with the rest of their team, apparently, if you've been <laughs> following college football. It seems that everybody at Colorado has decommitted, whether, you know, they were on the roster or not. Won't be long before Tim Brewster is packing his bags. <laughs> Tim Brewster might be the next. Yeah, we might be decommitting. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Brew. This this position is filled. You're going to have to go sell yourself off to somebody else. <laughs> um. So you see this staff, man, they never give up on a kid just because he commits somewhere else. The staff doesn't close those doors, you bet. Corey Raymond was on the phone with him as soon as he decommitted. Like, um, what's up, young man? You want to mm -hmm. slide through? We're about to fill this class up. So if you want to jump in. Now, another name, obviously, we got multiple Louisiana cornerbacks we're after, and the other one being Wardell Mack, who is going to visit, who had set his official visit for June 16th. So, you know, we always say Louisiana kids are going to go to LSU, but – I'm not sure how many cornerbacks LSU's taking this class, but I doubt I, I doubt they're taking all of them. So hopefully Corey Raymond, you know, work his magic and maybe pull one of those young men from Louisiana with the ties that he has out there. But like we said, guys, there's not a whole, whole lot of just big time recruiting news this week. Just coaches doing their thing, man, out on the trail, visiting schools. You're seeing they're visiting four or five schools out in each state a day, going you know, these position coaches have their assignments. They're out there hitting the road and doing the the part of college football that's kind of unsung and that, you know, you don't we don't put a lot of love behind. But these guys put in the work, man. They put in the hours, always on the road here in the late spring months, early summer. Um, but that being said, guys, what is going on right now, and we just talked about it with Colorado, is the transfer portal. And – um Colorado isn't the only one having some guys leave the program. Uh, we had a couple of our own leave this week. We're going to talk about that for a second. Portal mania, baby. It never ends nowadays, it doesn't seem. Um, first name we had hit the portal. Tough one, man. This is a tough one. Antoine Powell, defensive end. Uh, shined late in the season last year, coming on late after uh, Brenton Cox was dismissed from the team. Really looked like he was making a push, like he was going to be a, a starter opposite, opposite Princely this season. And now the coaching staff is uh, shuffling their feet a little bit on this. Wes, I know, I know you're concerned, man. What do you think? Hey, if if you've been listening to this podcast for the last couple months or the last year or however long you've been listening to it, if you're new to it, I, my concern has always been. Uh, the Jack linebacker, rush in, however you want to describe it, opposite side of the strong defensive end. So that's uh, the position we're talking about is Dante Fowler, uh, Alex Brown, uh, those type of guys that rush the pass and get sacks and just put pressure on the quarterback. 
uh, your Von Millers, that that type of guy, your Bosa, uh, Chase Young, those type of guys that make impact as far as making their living, making money, rushing the passer. Uh, I feel like we failed there. Uh, at one point in time, uh, we we were stacked at that position, whether it was low guys, guys that we didn't know about uh, over the years. But right now, I feel like we're thin. Uh, we talked about this before the uh, the podcast. Uh, you guys are not as concerned as I am because you guys feel like <clears throat> there may be some younger guys that can step up into just and feel that that depth. And I'm not saying those guys can't. Uh, I just feel like uh, to be an elite defense, uh, you need uh, someone special. And when I mean special, I mean we missed on Keeley last year. This upset me. Uh, we'll talk maybe talk about Collins later. That that's somebody that. We're not trending for right now because of what LSU did this past weekend on this visit. If you don't know, they brought out everybody, uh, the the Chases and the the, the Burrows and, and and anybody that that had played the LSU recently that had a name. And we may may, may not get this guy. So to lose Powell and that depth and what he showed to me after because we were all concerned with Brenton constantly like well, who's going to be next up. Powell showed a lot last year. Uh, there, there were some times that I felt like some things that I feel like they can work on as far as wrapping up him and Princely together were a great combination of defensive ends and, and Jack linebackers as far as rush ins. Uh, Prince was on one side, he was on the other side, and they got to the quarterback. Remember the game against Jordan Travis, they didn't wrap up as they should, uh, given give cr uh, credit to Travis, he's kind of a loose quarterback, but they were there, and that just stuff that you teach and say hey you got to wrap up you got to strip the ball when you get there things that you can work on in the off season but the kids so promise to lose somebody like that to me in my opinion whether we have a freshman coming up or not uh that maybe would step in and fill in that position to me that hurts our defensive in the hole cj um like wes said you know we're not as quite as concerned as he is but uh what do you think the the number one option there to replace powell is i think that you look Look at, at uh, T.J. Searcy. The staff is super high on T.J. Searcy. I think T.J. Searcy can come in and immediately fill that need. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of the, the bad habits that, that Powell had uh, because he's kind of uh, – he's going to learn it one way now. He doesn't have to fight back against old teachings and old habits. You've got a guy that's coming in that's going to be taught this is the way you do stuff, and he's going to know that that's the way you do stuff. It's not going to be – like you're trying to fight against the way you learned under Grantham and now you're learning this way under Armstrong. Um, I, th I think it's it's going to be a lot more sound. He's going to probably still make some mistakes because he's a freshman and freshmen are going to play like freshmen at times. Um, I think that there's uh, Cameron James is still in there. He's another guy that this, this super has stat, this, uh, um, excuse me, staff is super high on. He's uh, a great athlete. He's really raw. So we could see that come into play. And then Kelby Collins is another one. He's the kind of guy that I just feel like you could put anywhere on the defensive end, either side, stand him up on, you know, in the stance, whatever. Um, I think that he can make those plays too. So I think we've got a lot of guys coming in. And uh, that that was kind of like the, the, the criticism though. At one point last year, it's like, man, why are we getting all these ends? We don't have, a, we don't have a nose tackle, right? We don't have a nose tackle. Why are we getting all these ends? Well, now we're kind of seeing, thank God we got all these ends because, you know, stuff like this happens. Um, so you've got a bunch of guys that I think are coming in that can really flash. They're young. I think they're hungry. I think they're ready to go. I think Kelby Collins is a guy that's going to surprise a lot of people. I think he's going to be an all uh, SEC freshman team guy um, because he's got that kind of skill set to him. Everything that I've heard sounds like he should be wearing an NFL badge on his shirt, you know, in practices. I mean, so the guy is a, he's, he's a hell of a player. Um, so there's, there's those guys and I think they're just going to make immediate impacts and you're going to forget really what class they are, um, coming in because they're, I think they're just ready to play. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a little insulted from, from, from my guy that just keeps getting left out of this conversation. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's time to get some burn for Jack Pyburn. All right. I mean, hi, don't mighty. <laughs> I love in all, Jack. Honesty, I love in all Jack. honesty, man, I like Jack. I think Jack is a hard worker. He's a lunch pail kind of guy. Jack Pyburn might be getting some snaps this fall. So definitely. definitely. Gonna He's the to... guy that puts in the work. He's the guy that puts in the effort. I believe, you know, if you do that, I think that with this staff, you get rewarded um, for putting in the hard work and putting in the effort, putting in the, uh, 
you know, the, the, the practice reps, um, I think you get rewarded with that. So, you know, with Pyburn, he's the kind of guy that's, you know, going to bring his ham and cheese to practice and he's going to show <laughs> up and he's going to be the, you know, first guy in, last guy out. So, you know, I think it's tough to keep a kid like that off the field. I mean, hey, but it's going to be an open room. The staff is going to do, going to decide which guy they feel is the most ready. But I also want to put out there, be on the lookout. I know that the Gators and the staff are looking through the transfer portal to see if they can also find a guy there maybe that could come in and get some reps as well. Right now, if you look in the portal, not a lot of what you would call elite names at that position, but um, you also don't know what back channels they're going through to talk to kids. Obviously, we know it can't be an SEC guy, but that doesn't mean there's not a guy out there at a lesser school, you know, that that's tearing it up that we don't know about that they're not, they've reached out to and say, Hey, look, you want to come up to the big boy and play with the big boys. We've got a spot that you can come compete for. Mm. And that kind of work is going on daily. I mean, recruiting ain't just high school kids anymore. We've learned that right. very well the last calendar year that, uh, that the portal recruiting is, is just as important. And these guys do it through all means necessary to try to get these kids, uh, get in these kids ear, and, and see if they'll take the bait. Uh, obvi- obviously, you know, when you're University of Florida, you can also offer some of these kids at a lower school maybe a bigger NIL deal to come on up and, and get into the mix as well. So one other guy we got to talk about, man. Um, it's a sad day for Gator Nation. Xavier Henderson has hit the portal. He will no longer be allowed to take a bubble screen for two yards in a Gator uniform. I know y'all are upset. Listen, I love Xavier Henderson. Great kid. Um, never truly, I would say, reached that potential that we had for him coming in to Florida. Um, you can say maybe it was previous staff. I mean, the previous staff didn't help do him any favors. Or maybe he just wasn't what we thought he was. And that's no knock on Xavier Henderson. I wish the best for the kid wherever he ends up. I know he's taking a visit to Miami as of today, um, and good for him. I hope it works out well for him, and and hope he's gone by the time we play them next year, and we don't ever have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. But I think the wide receiver room is going to be okay with or without Xavier Henderson. What do you think, CJ? I think that that was the main reason he left. I don't think that I think that Xavier is a guy whose whose time is running out. If he wants to play in the NFL, he's got this year to do it, right? So he's going to come in and he's going to have um, the wide receiver room the way it was shaping up. He wasn't going to get to play as many snaps. Uh, he wasn't going to be as big of a part of the offense as he'd like to be because right now, like I said, this is make it or break it for X. Uh, he's got to have a year where he can get drafted. And with the wide receiver room the way it was and the young guys that are coming in that were going to do a lot of the similar stuff that we had him doing anyway, uh, we're going to kind of take – take some reps away from him. And I I think that's the main reason he transferred is he wants to go somewhere where he could be a more focal point in the offense, get some more film, um, you know, try to really make his case to get drafted next year. And I don't think that Florida put him in the best position to do that this upcoming season, because where he's at and where Florida's at are, are two different, different stages. You know, Florida's trying to rebuild with youth. And then you've got Xavier Henderson, who's kind of part of the old guard, and he's just – I don't think he's got a place anymore. Not as not as big as one as, as he'd like to have. Um, you know, so I think that's what it all boiled down to. I don't think there was so much that we told, hey, X, you need to leave or something like that. I think they would have liked to still had him. But, you know, X is looking at the kind of guy he, – he probably wants seven or eight targets a game every game, and I don't think Florida could give that to him. Um, not not with the wide receiver room shaping up the way it was. I think, and and before we get to Wes on this, I think this is a, if you're looking at it as a fan and you're like, oh, man, you know, is this bad? Is it good? I think it's tremendously good. I think Xavier Henderson saw the talent in that room and it was like, I, I might not have a place here. So, Wes, what you think? Um. If you look at the Utah game, I'm not a fan of Napier's. I, I love screen games if you can run them right. 
like uh, saying Andy Reid uh, in the NFL, great screen call. I, I just don't like the way we ran it. And sometimes CJ didn't. Uh oh. Wes having a little technical difficulties, but I understand what he's saying there as far as maybe, you know, the way the screen was run. But yeah. I think, I think a lot of that was personnel based. I don't think yeah. we I don't think we had the guys on the team to run it the way Napier wanted to run it. Um yeah, I don't think that Xavier Henderson ever really needed to be a screen guy. If he um, if CJ was going to Uh-oh. Go All right, he's back. Wes, go ahead. Wes, you lagged out on us, but you're back. Okay, my bad. Oh, okay, so I start over and recap. We were talking that. about that we didn't feel like Napier had the personnel he wanted to run screens possibly the way he yeah. wanted to run them. And, and that's where I was going to go. Uh, CJ and to me Justin Shorter were the same type of receiver in a way the big body possession type of guy that maybe can go deep and, and beat receivers to have him doing the screens I don't think was uh, suitable for him. Kind of what uh, I believe you and CJ said earlier as far as that type of guy on the other side. So to me, you want your shifty guys doing it. And he in the Utah game, if, if I recall, he made plays where nothing was there to get us in uh, manageable positions. Because the, the screen game that that we were running, I'm don't like it. I'm not a fan of it uh, unless it's called correctly. Like I said, a la and Reed. That there's a time you set up defenses, and it seemed like we were never doing that correctly. And the AR throws were off as well on those things. So it could have been a combination of the both. Uh, I'm a Frazier's guy. You guys know that. I was hoping that he stayed. Uh, to me, that's our big possession guy to go with uh, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, uh, what, what y'all call him? White boy Ricky? I don't know. White boy <laughs> Rick. Yeah. White boy Rick, Rick, baby. So, so Frazier's the big receiver. Then you have Ricky, and then whether it's Kill Douglas, uh, uh, Mazel, or Andy Jean, or whoever is the other receiver, that's the type of guy on that side that you want running those type of routes, not uh, C.J. Henderson. So. Uh, not excuse me, Xavier Henderson. That was talking about CJ's brother, but um, so to me, it's not like a huge loss because I like our wide receiver. You not like the DN of losing Powell, um, but I, I'm I'm cool with uh, Xavier uh, moving on. Yeah, I mean, I mean to, to say what, what you're saying is like I, I just feel like Xavier is not built to run a screen. No, like he's he's a top end guy. I think he's the kind of guy that I'd like to see more run like the streaks and stuff, and yeah. let that that speed that he's got great top end speed, but he's just not great on the first step. He's not a really, really shifty guy. It, it's kind of like he's just like, you know, he's not – his zero to 60 isn't isn't that high. So he can't go from, you know, flat-footed to 100 miles an hour as fast. I feel like if you were – he was the kind of guy that if you gave him a chance to kind of run off the line, run like a deep post or something, and we never really saw that with him, I feel like he would have worked better. But, again, that's an issue of where were the really fast, shifty guys on, on offense at the wide receiver spot because going into it, we really didn't have anybody. You got Pearsall, but Pearsall is your wide receiver one. And that's what I was going to say. I think a lot of people said, well, why isn't Ricky running these? And I think Napier was trying to avoid Ricky. You know, he already had the foot injury coming into the season early. I think Napier was just trying to avoid Ricky taking a ton of hits. I mean, and he's already going to take the hits. He Obviously, he gets on just regular routes. But if you're just throwing the screen to him five or six times a game also – I mean, somebody else has got to take that some some of the game. Like, you just can't plus, keep getting your number one guy hit and hit and hit and hit. And right. Rick is in the slot. He's more of a slot guy. Than... Yeah, but he was the only real shifty guy we yeah, had. Yeah, is basically yeah. what, you know, yeah. if you're a fan on the outside looking in, you're like, well, you want the guy that's shifty and got quick feet to catch that ball. Yeah, but I like I said, I just don't think Napier had the personnel to run that play the way. I mean, we were right. running, we were running screen routes with like Dejon Reynolds and Dejon but, Reynolds and but, was built to do it. But to that point. You also have that uh, the offensive lineman to be able to get out there for that screen. I don't know if we've had if we had the, the athletic type to get out there to assist with those screens as well. Because even if Henderson was catching the ball, I don't care if it was if it was Ricky, if it was Percy Harvin, or if it was Reggie Bush. Oh, the blocking was was the bad. The blocking was horrible on those yeah. plays. And yeah. the Nobody wide receiver was blocking was bad, except for shorter. Yeah. There wasn't very good blocking anywhere. And, yeah. and one other note, name to note before we move on from this, guys, don't don't sleep on Marcus Burks either. Yeah. Marcus, Marcus Burks Burt is, is, is really coming on strong. You saw that incredible catch he had during the spring game. Um, and, and word on him is he looks tremendously motivated. And one small 10 seconds. Billy Gonzalez taught that with Van Jefferson, Grimes, and 
we talked about wide receiver blocking. That's something those guys with Tyree Cleveland, those guys worked on, and we saw even before that when he was here in. Uh, that's a good point. Billy really teaches that block. Yeah, he, he really teaches does. wide receiver blocking. So now that's Billy's something you got to do that. For sure. so I'm glad you guys brought that. And up. we saw some of this in the spring game, like when Andy Jean got a spring get, got a got a catch on a um. Screen. Yes, on a screen as my mind goes completely blank, um, and and just made it happen with his feet and broke a tackle because he's he's t- you know he's strong up top, has the shifty feet, strong upper body, wiggle, break a tackle, seven, eight, nine, ten yards. I mean, and that's what we want to see out of those plays, not catch it running up, up, you know, straight up, get three yards, get pulled down. So we'll see. I mean, and also you know we we. You know, my man is coming. Trey Wilson, maybe. Yep. He's going to be on campus, and and I got a feeling you're going to see him catch a couple of those this season, too. Maybe more than a couple. All right, guys. Well, if any other guy – there's some more rumors about guys hitting the portal. We don't want to expand on those right now because some of that stuff it, the staff is still working on. I don't think it's something that we need to put out in the air. If you've heard rumors, you've heard the rumors um, of who it may be, the guys that are being mentioned. Um, we're going to let the staff continue to do their thing until they're ready to announce or the kids are ready to announce. That's, that's not our place to, to throw that out there. So just be on the lookout, man. It's, it's getting to the deadline here where kids can announce. I think you'll see a bunch of names hit real quick and then the staff will be on it, man. We'll have, I think in May, you're going to see a lot of kids visiting in the first few couple weeks of May as we try to round out this roster heading into the fall. But, guys, well, now it's time to talk about the guys that have moved on from the team. It is draft time. Draft starts tomorrow night. Um, we know it's going to be a big night for Anthony Richardson, which is just a matter of where he goes. But got a lot of other Gators that are going to be taken on the second, third, fourth day, and then after. I mean, obviously, some of these kids won't get drafted. They'll be undrafted free agents. And then they'll have to go, you know, the work starts all over again for them to try to prove themselves. So, with that being said, guys, we're going to take some time and we're going to talk about some of our guys. And maybe we feel like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about a name. Obviously, we're going to start with AR and we'll work on the way down and what we think is going to happen with these young guys and where they may fall. And, of course, so, like I said, we're going to start with AR, man. A lot of rumors about AR out there, where AR would go, where the best spot for AR to go is. Um, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion of how good AR could be in the pros or maybe not how good AR could be in the pros. Um, obviously we've seen AR's highs and we've seen his lows, but we also know that he's only started what 15 career games. So the young man has all the ability in the world. He just needs the right situation. CJ, what's the right situation for AR tomorrow night? The right situation is the Seahawks. I don't think he'll go to the Seahawks, but I think the Seahawks would be the best place for him. I think the Raiders are going to trade up to that three spot, and I think they're going to take him. Uh, I think the Raiders have Jimmy G now, which is a guy that Anthony Richardson could sit behind um, and learn if if they want to go that route. I think that Anthony Richardson is a guy who really needs to sit behind somebody and learn because he's a redshirt sophomore. He's He's just now 20 years old. You know, this isn't this isn't a hardened fifth year senior coming into the draft that's going to be making you know these. He's not like fully matured yet. We we didn't get to see finished product AR in college. We we didn't get to see it because he didn't stay long enough. He didn't play long enough. Um, I think that's a lot of the the negativity people have against AR is oh he can't do this he can't do that. He's, just, he's a redshirt sophomore. You know this this is kind of unheard of. You know you don't see a lot of this happen. Um, so I think I think he's going to end up with the Raiders. I think that they're going to get him. Uh, you know, you've, we've all heard AR could go from, you know, we've got teams saying AR is the best quarterback in this draft to he's undraftable. You know, it's just you get all these different opinions that come left and right all over the place. Um, but I, I think that's where he's going to end up. I think Vegas is the spot. Uh, sit behind Jimmy G, really start to learn. McDaniel seems to love to take the chance of the quarterback. We saw McDaniel take the quarterback with uh, with Tim Tebow in Denver. So, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with that. But that's that's kind of what I think. Wes, where do you think AR is going? Uh, to, to kind of say talk about what CJ just said, uh, 
if he goes to Josh McDaniels, I wouldn't mind that. Josh McDaniels is a creative offensive mind. Uh, you saw what the, the Patriots uh, drafted uh, our boy uh, Hernandez and uh, uh, Gronk, how he changed the offense from Randy Moss and Wes Walker to a tight end type of offense. So you saw all the things that he can do. I wouldn't say that's a bad fit when they already have Jimmy G there, uh, a veteran quarterback that they signed to a three-year big contract. Not a huge contract, but a big contract that you know AR is going to sit. So I wouldn't mind him going to, to the Raiders if they trade up uh, with the Cardinals at three. I also wouldn't mind him, and this is if, this, if your scenario doesn't happen, I think he's going to the Colts. The reason why I say I think he's going to the Colts is because their offensive coordinator, uh, Brad Johnson's the office court now for Philadelphia, but uh, their the head coaches came from Philadelphia. So we saw what he did with Jalen Hurts. To me, AR is a souped up Jalen Hurts. Uh, he can throw a deep ball. You got you had Devontae Smith and you had uh, AJ Brown on the outside, deep threats, uh, using Jalen Hurts' ability to throw the ball deep. And that's what he did, also using his run game. So if you take that offensive coordinator and what he implemented and how because Jalen Hurts was awful. I don't know if people remember the game against Tampa last year. Well, I think he completed, <laughs> completed six. I don't know how many passes he completed. But last year, not just previous year, but the year before, when they played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the playoffs, Jalen Hurts looked awful. This year, he was the second runner-up for the MVP. And that's because of the offensive coordinator tweaked and worked on some things to get him better. So if he goes to the coach with that office, with that head of coach, uh, and seeing what he did with Jalen Hurts, I think that will be the best fit for him. I'm not opposed to your scenario with the uh, with the Seahawks either, but I love the Colts more uh, as well. Yeah, I don't think I don't. If somebody doesn't trade into that third spot to try to get AR, I think he's going to the Colts. I'm almost just my mind is set on that. I think they love the kid. I think Will Levis there is a smoke screen. Um. <laughs> You know, as we've like said that. on this show, we're not nobody on this show is a Will Levis fan. I don't know anybody that is willingly <laughs> a Will Levis fan, but for some reason, the dude still gets hyped. Um, Mel now there, and there's lots of talk out there that CJ Stroud, because of his cognitive test score and all, is falling. So, AR absolutely could be the second quarterback off the board. It looks like the Panthers are locked in on Bryce Young. Um, I mean, bigger surprises have happened, but it, it could be, you know, that third pick with the Cardinals could be a free-for-all for teams trying to trade up to get their guy. So, like CJ said, it could be the Raiders. Uh, it could be a team like the Titans. I mean, the Titans, they, it's come out there. They have no faith in Malik Willis. They're going to be looking for a quarterback. So, there's a lot of scenarios out there, man. I just want AR to end up in a good situation where he's not forced yeah. into playing too soon. Yeah. To see him and with that coach in Indianapolis with Jonathan Taylor. Oh, it would be a great offense, but I just feel like the pre here's the problem I have with a kid getting picked top five is that pressure to play him so soon because of the money yeah. that, that comes with it. Like I, and CJ said Seattle would be the best case scenario because a, you got Gino for, t for a few more years. Pete Carroll doesn't care about the pressure to play the kid right away. Pete Carroll's job is safe. Nobody's running Pete Carroll off, you know, so he, he can do what he wants to do. That's why I like, that's why I like Raiders or Seattle. I'll take, I'll take, they, I'll have, take they, have, uh, they both had quarterbacks in place. Who's the Colts quarterback? Nobody knows. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Need a quarterback. <laughs> Matt, Matt Ryan. Point. Matt Ryan is is has been jettisoned. So, <laughs> so I, the other Jimmy the G. other option is is uh, I think the Ravens are a viable option for Anthony Richardson. If they cannot get a deal done with Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson seems like the bigger version of Lamar Jackson. So you really wouldn't have to change your offense. Um, you know, they still have Huntley there, who's serviceable. Um, so if they didn't feel like AR was ready to go, they could kind of plug him in. I, I don't know. I know the Ravens did meet with AR, and I think they really like him. I don't know if they're going to be willing to go up and get him, but I think the Ravens are the, the backdoor sleeper team that could take AR, depending on how desperate they are to get him. All right, guys. Well, 
it'll be fun to watch tomorrow night, man. And like we said, we wish AR the best, man. We hope a team gets him and he's in a great situation. Definitely. And and can do can brag control. And, and well, I just, <laughs> I just want to see the kid prove all. I mean, and let's let's be honest. This kid has more detractors and doubters than yeah. maybe any quarterback taken in the top five in a long, long time. Uh, I, maybe – well, from his own fan base. Yeah. I mean, from everybody, though. Everybody's like, oh, you see his highlights. He's trash. Look at his stat line. He's trash. Uh, you know, team went six, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's yeah. Everybody wants to say the kid can't be a winner. And we know he's a great guy. We know he's a, he's, he's a high character kid. And um, that's why I want him to go to a smaller market team as well. He doesn't need to go to a big market. Like I don't think, I, you know what? If he, he could handle it, but that the whole thing is, Getting the the team having the patience with him to allow yeah. him to develop as a pure NFL quarterback, right? And and that's what I want to see. I you sure don't want to see him year one unless it's late in the season and there's no damage to be done from it. Yeah. Um. You sure as hell don't want to see him week one through five, six, seven, because right. there's nothing to be gained for either party in that aspect. You're gonna throw him out there. We've seen him when he's pressure when the pressure is on him when he's not ready for it and and let's be honest he's he's not all the way ready for the pressures right. of being a no. team starting NFL quarterback right this minute and right. he'll probably be the first person he I don't know if he would tell you that outright but behind closed doors he probably tells people that but anyway on to the next guy guys we're gonna go a little faster with the rest of these guys Osiris Torrance is is looking likely to be the next gator off the board Wes, where do you think Osiris might end up? Uh, before this last couple of weeks, he was slated to go into late first round. Uh, because all these offensive tackles, and he's, uh, I don't know if you guys have been following it. Uh, I'm a Washington fan, so I know what we need. I'm hoping that we can get Torrance. But for some reason, a lot of these offensive linemen, have, uh, as far as tackles, have been pushed up. He's still the first guard that's going to come off the board, but it's looking like he might go to second, um, second round early in the second round, but he's going to be a late first round or early second round guy, but uh, he's still going to be the first guard. It's just these tackles and these DBs uh, have been pushed up lately uh, because uh, there's so many of them and teams in desperate need. This is a pass happy league. You got to protect the quarterback and you have to defend the quarterback. So a lot of DBs and often tackles have been pushed up, but he's still, uh, Look like from what I've been seeing, he's been mocked either late first round or early second round. CJ, yeah, uh, I, I've seen the same thing. I think as the running backs go, so will Osiris Torrance. Um, because originally he was slated to either go to the Bills or the Bengals, and both of those teams want a running back. You know, they both want either Bajan Robinson or Jameer Gibbs. We'll see if Bajan Robinson holds out that long or not. Um, I think that if if they're there, I think if the Bengals are sitting there, no running backs on the board, they can't take one. I think they're the best bet for him to go in the first round. Right now, I've got him going early in the second round to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I feel like that would be the you know <clears throat> probably my next spot for him. I think that they could use that. Kyler Murray needs all the help he can get from getting killed out there. Um, so that that's kind of where I have him in my mind is is Arizona's uh, third pick in the second round. Yeah, this one for me, I, I know a lot of Jacksonville guys have said they would like Osiris Torrance, but I think they're more keen on a safety, maybe mm. at 24 right now. I've seen Branch from Alabama. A lot of people think he'll be their pick, but I've seen a lot of Jacksonville fans say, man, we'd love to have Osiris. I tell you, another team to watch uh, from a personal standpoint is if he slips to that last couple picks in the first round, I could see my Falcons draft trading up for him as well. The Atlanta Falcons, as of today, one of the few spots they did not fill through free agency was left guard. We have no left guard to speak of. I mean, so I could definitely see us if Osiris Torrance slips to that, you know, 30th pick somewhere in there, top of the first round. I could see us really pressing to try to trade up from the 12th pick in the second round to get him. I mean, it would cost, but. We know, man, Osiris is a hog. That kid, I think that guy is a plug and play guard for the next 10 years in the NFL, honestly, after watching him just for the last season. So we'll see, man. He I'd love to see us get two in the first round. It may happen, it may not. If not, we may look like we're getting two in the second round as we move on to the next guy. Uh, 
Things are looking pretty good for Gravon Dexter possibly to end up in the second round. It's looking like I've seen some with him mocked. Uh, I seen one today with him mocked to the Atlanta Falcons. As I mentioned, the Falcons having the 12th pick and we're looking for interior defensive linemen. Um, uh, Wes, what you? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Wes, you had it last time. CJ, who? What you think about Gervon? Where do you think he might? End I, up? I got Gervon in the third round. I think he gets picked up by Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville takes him to kind of bolster that inside because I think where Jacksonville is going to be picking again, it's really not going to benefit them for like a lot of their big team needs. I think a lot of those guys are going to be off the board. So I'm, I'm thinking that Gervon is a is going to be their option in the third round, around pick 88. Um, so that, that's kind of where I am. Am on Gravon. I think Gravon's a guy again who's really raw. He's he's got a lot of talent. He played out of position last year. Didn't serve him very well. Uh, he's a guy who was injured a lot last season, so we really didn't see the best of Gravon Dexter. Um, so I think if Jacksonville can get him, keep him, home, you know, he's close to home. Uh, I think he'll be in better spirits that way, and I think that he could really show up and play well for Jacksonville and be a guy who who kind of might end up being one of the later gems of the, the draft class if he can live up to his potential. Wes, what you think about Gervon? Yeah, um, like CJ said, this is a guy that uh, played out of position last year. He's a high ceiling. Uh, we know it. We've seen him every weekend because we watch every Florida game. Uh, I think he will fall out of the second round. I'm with CJ in the third round. I've seen him mock from second to the fourth, so I'm going to be in the middle and, and say third round. The defense tackle class in whole in general is not very deep this year. Uh, you have more of tight ends, DBs, and uh, what am I missing? Tight ends, DBs, and the offense tackles uh, early as far as uh, the NFL draft. So uh, with the defensive tackle not, class not being as deep kind of benefits uh, someone like Gervon. So hopefully he can go in early in the third round, if not the second. If he gets over the second, then, hey, I uh, love it for him. Uh, I just hope he goes to – as we all want these guys to go to the right team that's going to – put him in the right position to excel so we can uh, again brag and troll so hopefully he goes uh in the second or if not maybe i think i'm um, with cj in the early third yeah um gervon is is a mystery man i mean the talent is there and it, obviously we know he's got a tremendous frame so i know a lot of nfl teams have covet that uh i know that he was given by talking to somebody close to the team a a month or so ago, we were talking about it. He received several second round grades from, from NFL people. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I guess it just depends on you need that one team that really likes what they see in him. As we've said many a times, it only takes that one team mm -hmm. to see that tape and be like, man, I really, we need that kid. We can coach that kid into becoming something special. We just yep. got to get him, you know, get him in our system. And um, we'll see who that is, man. You know, every year there's that, that one team that just gets on the gets on a kid and picks him high. And uh you never know. Gervon is one of those special kind of players that could definitely pique someone's interest like that. Let's talk about the next guy on the, I got on the list, guys. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. We'd had this conversation this time last year. I'm not sure this guy would have even been on the list. Amari Bernie. Amari Bernie has come a long way in a calendar year, gentlemen. Um very athletic. Just hadn't shown it on the field. And I think his own field performance this year, coupled by his workouts and things like that, that he did in front of scouts. I think Amari Bernie has worked himself maybe into the fourth or fifth round. What do you think, Wes? He is the new age linebacker. If last year was an illusion, uh, he can play that cover tight end, uh, cover the flats, type of backer uh, with the way teams, the Patrick Mahomes, the Joe Burrows, uh, the Josh Allens, uh, the way they put you in predicaments, even the Jalen Hurts that uh, with the RPRs and, and, and that stuff where they they can run it or pass it. You need somebody to be able to uh, to, to, to be able to run fast and, and do multiple things on as far as a backer. So he, he will be coveted. Uh, as far as that type, but somebody that you want to develop, that you know you might have to develop because you only saw the one year. So I'm with you. I think he may be fifth round, fifth or sixth round for, for Bernie. Uh, I like Bernie. Uh, big fan of what he did this year. So I think he may be, and, and linebackers are, are, are becoming like running backs now. If you're not elite like uh, 
I forget his name, but the coach linebacker or uh you just got me too. You just yeah, stumped uh, me uh, in the middle of saying his name. It yeah, came to my from, mind. From South Carolina State, he's down from South Carolina, so that's why I remember him. But uh him and uh, the kid from uh Baltimore that left Chicago and traded there, those type of linebackers are and uh, Trey Emmons that went to Chicago Bears. Uh those type of linebackers are different and special and Shaquille so, Leonard. Yeah, that's that's his name. And if you're not that, then you're not getting drafted in the first round. So they, they're finding these guys later and later. Uh, and you have to be like almost like how Bernie is, converted safety nowadays uh, to play that position. Uh, so I, I see Bernie in the fifth round. CJ? Yeah, Bernie's a guy that, that is like, uh, like what I was just saying, kind of like what, what you see from like a new linebacker. These guys that used to play safety, now they play linebacker. Um, because of the tight end position and the RPOs and things. Um, and linebacker is a boom or bust position in the NFL. I mean, you're really either really good linebacker, you're going to be around for a while, or you're just not. You know, you, you see the guys like that have been picked in the first round at the linebacker that have just kind of bounced. Um, you know, guys that were massive, massive targets coming out. I, I think that Bernie is the kind of guy that you could see going in like somebody getting really high on him, taking him in the fifth round. Um, and I could also see Bernie being an undrafted free agent. I think that there's a possibility that he falls all the way out and some team goes and they sign him that way. Um, I, I think it's just hard to tell like with Bernie because he's got a lot of film prior that isn't very great. He's got one good season. He shows he's athletic. He, you know, he's kind of a converted player. It's just hard for me to grade him. I, my gut says he goes somewhere in the sixth round or seventh round. Um, but you know, I hope the best for Bernie. I really don't know what team wants him. I could see maybe the Colts having a spot for him, maybe the Rams having a spot for him. Uh, there's a few teams like that, but you know, Bernie's just a guy that is it, to me, it's hard to gauge uh, how good he's going to be at the next level. Yeah, I, I've got him personally going, um, in the fifth or sixth. I, 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 I slashed it because I really don't know. Like mm-hmm. you said, it, it's a it's a tremendous unknown. A lot of our guys that we're talking about right now could go anywhere from maybe the late fourth to undrafted. It's wild that we have these guys, you know, and and I think a lot of that has to do with the situations that they played in, um, bad coaching staff, bad habits that they got from those staffs, um, you know, and then certain some guys undersized, obviously, uh, and we're moving on to the next linebacker on the list here shortly. Um, it's just a weird bunch of situations that that our guys came out of that have really, I think, cost them on draft boards. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they are still got to go out there, play as hard as they can for whatever team they end up on, and hopefully, you know, make it from one contract to the next and, and show out. Um, and the next guy we're going to talk about, Ventrell Miller, man, and, and we love Ventrell. Uh, Ventrell is, 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 was the heart and soul of the defense. And I know a lot of people that's not saying much because the defense wasn't great. It wasn't because of Ventrell Miller. This man played on a broken ankle almost all season. Um, was the cat, you know, and people, oh, well, he, Ventrell looks slow on plays. Yeah, he's playing on a bloke, broken ankle. <laughs> um, one knock on Ventrell is he's undersized. I know that he, they, they had a workout for him and he, you know, a lot of people said he was undersized. I'd love to see Ventrell go sixth, seventh round, but I got a feeling Ventrell probably goes undrafted at the end of the day. Um, CJ, what you think about Ventrell? I think I think I'm kind of in the same boat. I love Ventrell. I think Ventrell, if he doesn't have the injury um, this year and he's healthy all the way through, he's a guy you're talking about in the fourth, fifth round. But I think there's just so many concerns playing through the injury. He got really healthy, really fast, apparently. Um, you know, through this process, which, you know, that kind of raises some eyebrows. Ventrell reminds me a lot of what David Reese was, where uh, David Reese was the kind of guy who'd been there for years. He gobbled up a lot of tackles. He had a lot of tackles on his stat sheet. And, you know, it just was from sheer amount of reps that he was playing. Um, You know, not to say he was a bad player, but he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't this guy that would jump off the page to you. And Ventrell isn't that kind of guy either. He's just a guy who's got a motor – and he's a football player. Um, I, I could definitely see that guy being an undrafted free agent and going to a practice squad or, you know, trying to really, really having the opportunity to pre- prove himself in the preseason. 
Um, like I said, I think if Ventrell was not injured, I think that he would definitely get drafted. But I think the injury concern, and then the year before he was injured, I think that's going to scare a lot of teams away. Um, but Ventrell's the kind of guy that I know if he gets a chance, he's going to be, you know, he might be able to prove a lot of folks wrong because of how much he, you know, cares about the game. Um, you know, so that that's where I'm at with Ventrell. If, if he's the kind of guy that I could totally see going uh, in the sixth or seventh round, but I, I would totally understand why he went undrafted just with the injury concerns and kind of what kind of player he is. Wes. Yeah, I agree with you guys. Uh, everything you guys said, uh, I think he's the type of guy that will, if, if he doesn't get drafted in the sixth or seventh round, he's the type of guy that will get signed as a creative just because of how he will interview. If teams interview him, He's going to sell himself. He's that type of guy, a leader, somebody that you can put on special teams, uh, and which is important in NFL because you can only play 53 guys. And people don't really – it's not like college where you got 85 scholarship athletes and these walk-ons and you have – people don't have to play – the stars don't have – like guys have to play both sides or play on special teams. And he's the type of guy that can make his mark on special teams because he's the type of guy that you know he's going to give you. Give you know he's going to give you his all, so that's where I'm at with Ventrell. So I'm I, nothing that you guys said that I don't disagree with. All right, next guy on the list, Justin Shorter. Justin Shorter definitely got that big NFL receiver type body. Um, and let's let's be honest, Justin shined at times last year. He really did. I, I obviously mm -hmm. AR had his ups and downs, and maybe that cost Justin Shorter some yardage on the stat sheet. Um, new offense, new everything. But Justin, man, Justin looked like a completely different player at times last year. And um, I could definitely see somebody taking a flyer on him, say, late fifth or sixth round, um, just because of his size. I mean, we know the guy's jacked. And, I mean, now, is that going to translate to production at the NFL level? Absolutely not. I mean, but Justin is a worker. We know that from having talked to him last year um, and everything everyone around him said, Justin Shorter was an absolute monster at, at practice and working hard. So uh, I think another guy that it just takes the right team, man, to want to take a flyer on that guy, Wes. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I think he will get drafted just because of uh, his measurables. Uh, if you can unlock that potential – uh, you may have something that a uh, few teams have. Um, to me, he never played to his size, in my opinion. Uh, to me, his greatest catch was the one trash threw him against Arkansas, uh, where Grimes got that the penalty for for coming off the sideline, when he caught that back shoulder, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a fade uh, or a back shoulder pass. To me, that was him, but he never played to his exact size, but – to, he did what in this offense from Napier, he did what Napier asked him to do. He was a deep threat, caught deep bombs, everything. I won't say everything that AR threw, but the, the deep balls that AR threw to him, he, he brought down. And he has the speed, he has the body, he has the frame, and that's going to get him drafted just off the potential of unlocking something. He was a former five star uh, recruit for a reason. So I do see him getting drafted, and I do see. Uh, a team taking a flyer on him just because the same thing where we're saying by AR being drafted in the first round, uh, but off potential, not off production. Uh, the same thing I can see with uh, Justin Shorter. Yeah, Justin Shorter is the kind of guy that I think is going to benefit from how this draft is. You got a lot of wide receivers in this draft, but you don't have a lot of big <laughs> wide receivers in this draft. I, I think a lot of the wide receivers that you're looking at that are going to be drafted are, are about, you know, 5'10". You know, there's a lot of guys that are just in that 5'10 sweet spot, like under six foot. So I think uh, Shorter and a guy like Landers from Arkansas are going to be two guys that are going to get drafted because of their size. Um, I, I could totally see Shorter ending up in, you know, the later rounds to a team like um, New England or a team like uh, Pittsburgh. I think that they really like the, the bigger bodied wide receivers. I think those are two teams that I could see picking him up. Um, so I think Shorter is going to get picked up. He's, he's got loads of potential. He showed it, you know, this year with different things he did as a vertical threat. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's ever fully showed us what he can do. Um, but I, I definitely feel like the Justin Shorter is going to fit the need of a team who's like looking for a guy that could be a red zone threat, a vertical threat, you know, a taller wide receiver, because there's just not that many of them in this draft. All right, guys, let's talk about maybe the most. I don't know if controversial is the right term, but 
Gator fans sure have a lot of opinions on him. Trey Dean. Oh, boy. CJ, where do you think Trey Dean might end up? Trey Dean was a guy that early on as a freshman, people were talking about a first-round pick. He had that kind of potential. He's had, you know, years where he just – Man, there's times where you see Trey Dean and he could do something and you'd be like, man, that's that's a hell of a play. That's a hell of a player. And he'll do things sometimes where he's like, that is a boneheaded, knucklehead like move that that guy just pulled. I don't know, uh, Trey Dean. If I'm a GM, Trey Dean's like undraftable for me because it's just too unpredictable. I think Trey Dean's going to get picked, though. I think he's going to go in the fourth or the fifth round. Same thing with uh, Torrance. I think those are two guys that are going to get picked just because of their potential. They have shown that they can do things well. Um, you know, then there's a lot of teams looking for safeties, and I think defensive back is probably the easiest spot to get drafted and get a play on the team because of kick returns, special teams, um, you know, how many defensive backs are on the field at the time. I feel like that is a spot where you can get drafted a little easier than others. Um, teams make more room for you. So, yeah, I think Trey Dane will probably get picked up in the, in the fifth, fourth or fifth round. I think that he's got that kind of athleticism. Um, it's just it's just a tough tough call for him. Wes, why don't you cover Dean and Torrance? Let's 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 knock those both out at the same time. Gotcha. Okay, with Dean, uh, like CJ alluded to, great fresh freshman year kind of tail. I think he got too big, in my opinion. But in today's NFL, we talked about Bernie and his adaptation. I'm a Washington fan. We use what we call the Buffalo nickel. We use three uh, safeties on the field. He can fill that type of role where he can come down in the box and make tackles uh, if need be, if in imputed in the right defense. But I don't see Trey Dean getting drafted. The same way I talk about Ventura Miller maybe uh, interviewing well, I don't think. I think the opposite of Trey Dean uh, and what he showed on the field. The film don't lie. We all talked about how he was celebrating after we losing and giving up a 21 point, a uh, 20 yard gain, and he's doing all these extracurricular things. But I do think he may be able to play. Uh, in the NFL, just off the basis of what uh, the new NFL is. And, and, and this is speaking for my team uh, as far as Washington, what we use as the Buffalo Lincolns. Rashad Torrance, I feel he has a better chance of getting drafted based off his ball skills. Uh, he came down with a lot of picks. And to me, uh, that translates that you want to get the ball back to your offense in the NFL. Uh, he will, I, I can see him getting late drafted in the seventh round. Uh, or six, a six, seven round as far as Torrance. Uh, I know they have a slate of him as uh, undrafted right now, but I can see him getting late drafted late. Yeah, um, Trey Dean, I, I'm kind of with what CJ said. I, if I'm an NFL GM, I, I'm not taking Trey Dean. And that's just me personally. I know some people will say, how can you say that? You got to support our guys. I, that's just my personal take. I wouldn't. Take Trey Dean with a draft pick. I would not use draft capital. No. Between his 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 40 times, his what we said is just some character. And I'm not saying that Trey Dean is a bad person. I'm not saying that he had that he's a bad character person. I'm just saying on the field, his character is suspect. And that's and that matters yep. to a lot of GMs. That's why they do interviews and watch film and see things like that to say, you know, is this guy worth, just besides what he brings to the football field, is he worth it in the locker room? And, and you know, is he going to get us a 15-yard penalty because he can't control himself after the play? And all of those things are concerns with me with Trey Dean. I think he's he's got, he's got a lot of talent. And I'm almost positive somebody will pick him because of his talent. We've, we've spoken about it many times already in this in this episode that you know it only takes that one team fall in love with the athletic ability or what they feel like they can get out of a player to get him drafted and that will happen i'm almost positive somebody if trey dean is sitting there late in the sixth round somebody's gonna say we're losing nothing by taking a flyer on this guy right here and um you know best of luck to trey dean i i, I hope he proves everybody wrong he becomes a successful NFL player at safety or wherever he ends up playing on the football field and, and proves everybody wrong. I, I hope for the best for the young man straight out of McDonough, Georgia, where I'm up you know, close to where I'm from. Uh, Torrance, that's a tough one for me, man. I just I, – I don't see it. I think Torrance probably goes undrafted, but he could go late there in the, in the draft. Somebody with a need at safety – 
could could have the same whim that say, you know what, I'm willing to take a flyer on this guy. I think we can make something out of him. Um, you know, the seventh round is for flyers most of the time anyway. And sometimes so would, teams have those compensatory picks. Where they comp, get comp, yeah. <laughs> they get two and three seven-round picks where they can take the flyers. Yeah, and you can take that flyer. And, and hey, once again, I wish all the luck to the young man. I hope he makes it. Um, I just – the tape for me isn't there. Uh, the one last guy that we haven't spoken about is uh, Garage. And it looks like, as of now, Garage is probably going to go undrafted, which is a damn shame. Um, a young man that most everybody thought probably should have come back. but Or at least transferred, maybe, if he wasn't happy at the University yeah. of Florida. Uh, you know, get another year on film, another year on the field. Make yourself have a little bit of a better take. Wasn't bad. Garage wasn't bad, but he's just not what NFL GMs are looking for at, right. at, at the tackle. So we'll see. Um, best of luck to all these young men. We want all our Gators to do great in the NFL. We we love to troll and talk about the number of players that we have in the NFL, and we hope that list grows, you know, by how many uh, – what is it we talk about? Uh, seven or eight more kids uh, starting yeah. after this weekend. That you know, we got eight more guys in the NFL rosters. So best of luck to all of them. We'll be watching. We'll be cheering for you. It's always go Gators from us. You know that. Um, so guys, we're gonna move on down the road now. We're gonna talk a little around the bases. We're gonna need CJ to yeah, talk gonna, to some Gator fans <laughs> off of the ledge. I'm gonna I'm gonna go fast because this this is we had a bad weekend. We sweep it under the rug. We're gonna move on play Missouri this weekend. But guys, South Carolina's good. Like they're <laughs> very good. If you don't believe I'm from my money, South Carolina's the best team in the country right now. I I, I truly believe that. I know people are gonna say LSU. I watched the LSU lose to Nichols last night, so I don't know, you know, <laughs> you know that's just me. Um, I think South Carolina is the best team in the country right now. You had to go over there. Florida has not won a series at Founders in Columbia since 2018. It's a tough place to play. Those people love the Gamecock baseball up there. It's they got a damn good baseball team with some really good players. And it was just a bad weekend. It's one of those series is where you can hit that ball as hard as you want to, and it's going right to somebody on the other team every time. Somebody's going to be there with a hand and glove. And, and you're just not going to get anything to fall. And that's just baseball. It's just how it works. Um, so, you know, walk yourself off the ledge. All hope is not lost. You know, we've still got a lot of baseball left to play. Um, we got a sneaky good Missouri team coming in to Gainesville this weekend. Do not for one minute overlook Missouri. I don't care what anybody tells you. I've watched them play baseball. They are a much better baseball team than, than they're giving credit for. I watched them knock off Vanderbilt a few weeks ago. They've got a good baseball team, so that's going to be a tough series. It's another SEC series. You got to win those. You got to keep it going here from here on out. You still got series down the road. You still got a series against Kentucky. You still got a series against Vanderbilt against those two teams that are also very good baseball teams in the East. It's just you got a long season. You had a bad series. You got to sweep that under the rug. You got to move on. You got to figure it out from here and just sit back and enjoy it, man. Jack Caglione is three home runs away from tying the record for the season. He's four home runs away from breaking it, and there ain't no doubt in my mind the way he's going right now, it, that record ain't safe. He might even extend that record. He might break the record so bad that won't nobody break it again. Hopefully, by the time we talk about we talk about it next week, we're already we're already celebrating. We're already celebrating and popping yeah. bottles for Jack Caglione. So, guys, just just you know, step yourself off the ledge. Don't freak out. If you want to fire Kevin O'Sullivan, you know, you're wrong. I'm not going <laughs> to mince words. You're wrong. I've, I've seen – there's one particular person on Twitter. I'm not going to say his name. He just shows up every week, and uh, he, he's always, you know, downplaying Kevin O'Sullivan. Oh, we shouldn't have given him this, shouldn't have given him that. Why would we do this? Uh, Kevin O'Sullivan is one of the best baseball coaches in the country right now. You're not going to get any better than him. He is an all-time great at Florida. So just step off that ledge, dude. You you've you've lost your mind because you lost to a top top three team in their home ballpark. It's not that big of a deal. You Obviously, on. the 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 voters didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. We only dropped to what fifth or sixth. We just swapped places with South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, that that's it. You've got a whole rest of the season to go to get it figured out. You still got to go to Hoover and play in that SEC tournament. We're still in a spot to host, uh, be one of the top eight seeds. Right now we're at number seven. We can only increase that. We still got to play Vanderbilt, you know, Kentucky. So if you win those series, then that's going to go care business, baby. Take care of your business. That's it. That's all it is. Keep everything in, in the front view. Take Take the rear view off of it. Don't look back. Just keep going forward. All right, boys, that's going to do it for this week's show, man. Um, I hope y'all all enjoy the draft the next few nights, guys. Watch it. Support your Gators. Hope, you know, support your, obviously, your NFL team. I hope all y'all's teams get better except the ones that play in the NFC South. You know, I'm a big Falcons fan, so I need all you Buck fans to have a bad draft. And Saints fans, y'all can all jump off a ledge and all that good stuff. We talk trash. <laughs> but as always, guys, we want to say thank you to all of you for listening in, supporting us, listening to us ramble on and on, give our thoughts. And, you know, we just do it because we love it, man. We love the Gators. We love bringing Gator information to y'all. CJ, you got anything to add before we jump? Just make sure you're always supporting us as creators, guys, on Twitter, on Facebook, the YouTube channel. We're close to 1,000. We're about 105 subscribers off. We're, we're super close to that 1,000 subscriber mark. If you guys could help us out, help us get in there. You're already watching. You've probably been here before. Go ahead and subscribe. Leave a like and leave a comment. This is your last chance if you want to win the hat. If you're not in the hat, if you've been on the fence about winning a free hat, I don't know why you'd be on the fence about winning a free hat. But if you've been on the fence, now's the time to jump off of it. Go ahead and give us that comment, like, and subscribe, and make sure that you let us know that you guys are watching, you're tuned in, and we're going to go ahead and announce that next week, who's winning the hat, we're going to send it to you. So if you want to be involved, get in there, make sure you're supporting our friends at Alma Mater. Go ahead and use our link if you want to buy all your gear. They might be dropping some new jerseys soon. I've seen they've hinted at kind of look like the baseball jerseys. So if you want to, you know, get your favorite player, your Jack Caglione, your Wyatt Langford shirts, it looks like they're going to be having those pretty soon. I'm excited about that. So keep up with them and use our link. It really helps us out a bunch when you guys do that. Yes, sir, man. Check out the merch. Like I get said, the merch. if you like this hoodie, man, comfortable as can be, I can't recommend it enough. I will drop the link for that hoodie in the in the description below for this video. Check it out. Drop a like. Leave us a comment. We appreciate it, man. Wes, take us home. Appreciate it, you guys. As they got the, those guys said, we love you. We appreciate you. Last week was our most watched uh, YouTube podcast, and we appreciate the love from you guys. Continue to watch us. Uh, we're going to try to do some things each month where we uh, give back to you guys who have been so supporting us. Uh, CJ mentioned about our Patreon. Please support us there. And as always, to our troops out there and those who support our troops, uh, as far as uh, intimately, as far as uh, whether you're children uh, of, of veterans who served or spouses, we, we, we love and support our veterans. I am one uh, as far as a, a spouse who my wife served. Um, have two cousins on, on my mom's side that served and two uncles on my mom's side and two uncles on my uh, father's side of service. So that's why I support our troops so much. And that's why I give the support to you guys and thank you guys for the service for us to be able to do what we do. So that's why we continue to support our troops. Uh, we love you guys and we're thankful for you guys and your support and what you do for us in our country. So uh, shout out to you guys as always. And uh, Hirsch and CJ, go Gators. Go Gators. Go Gators, baby. Catch y'all next week.